Walking on the lead, we spend a lot of time with the dogs tied. Tying the dog creates calmness and patience, and we need that. That's one important part. I think it's probably the most important part. So our dogs are tied away from us where we're not holding them. If you sit and pet a dog while the dog is tied, you will end up with a dog that has to be petted all the time. You will not be able to leave the dog. That will create separation anxiety, especially in smaller dogs that need protection. You'll end up with you and the dog, one bubble. Unless both of you are together, the dog won't be whole and neither will you. You have to be able to function as individuals, come together. Hey, enough. Thank you. Now, at one time, Kate was just like this puppy. At one time, Kate was worried. She wanted to be leaning on my side or somebody's side all the time. When you tried to walk her, she hugged my leg. She would trip you. So she started being tied. Now, had she been tied and a big dog bothered her, that would have been my fault because I would have been tying her in an unsafe place. So if you put a child somewhere and told them to wait for you and one of the gang members was there and they're picking on the kid while the kid is there doing what you said, how could that child trust you the next time that they would be safe if they waited for you? They wouldn't. This puppy has hardly been on a lead before, let alone, he's only four months old. He's not been socialized, which is exactly her. She hadn't been socialized either. None. She'd never been treated badly. But she'd never been treated. She'd been there. She played with other dogs, but she hadn't been handled. She hadn't she hadn't been educated at all. Hey, you're fine, Kate. Kate, you're fine. Back off. Back off. Back off. Thank you. Good dog. So Kate was pretty useless in the whole scheme of things. She's cute. That's about as all you could say. She whined when you left her. She was really silly when you tried to pet her. She didn't know what to do. When another dog would approach, because she had played with some dogs, nice dogs, but dogs that played a little rougher maybe, not too rough that she got hurt, but, you know, taught her that she noodled around on the ground, a little bit of submissive urination, um, a lot of uh, inconsistency, inconsistent behavior. Um, she had no idea what to do. In that, there was fear. She wouldn't stand up for anything. She tolerated just about anything. And if someone went to, you know, pet her or grab hold, she would just go down. My goal when I started working with her, and she became mine when she was about eight months old, eight or nine, something like that. And she's had very little structured education. She has, however, learned confidence. And her confidence comes from doing as I say. All right. Now, she and this little puppy have had just about the same basic um, childhood. 
they really have had no structured childhood. The difference is now at a year old, Kate's had some structure, so Kate's the next step up. Now, we're actually training two dogs together. We're training the puppy to trust a person for its security. So if this puppy is tied here, and we can control the big cow over there, the puppy doesn't have to be afraid, right? Doesn't that make the puppy convinced that he probably needs us? Sure. He can trust us. So if we leave the puppy and nobody's there to save him if a dog jumps on him, he's got no recourse except either put up with it or fight it. When you're that short, that dog needs to depend on you or it's going to take charge of itself. Now, how many little dogs, when you walk down the street, stand right up and come at you and bark and carry on? That's because the owner is not taking charge of that dog. If you were with somebody weaker than you, and you're walking down a street and there's some scary people walking towards you, you can look like a victim or you can stand up, right? Two choices. The best way is not to start a fight, but walk with confidence. Is that not true? Sure it is. What do we do with little dogs? Hold them back and they can bark and carry on and we excuse it. Oh, he's friendly. If he gets loose, he's going to think he's got the right to go challenge that big dog. It's like, I don't understand this. When we give kids too much freedom to have to go out, they have to do the same thing. They need security. And they need to learn by example. Good girl, Kate. Okay. Now, this puppy is watching this dog. She's the biggest threat in his little world right there. But if he sees that I can control her, and he can trust me, he gave up already. Yeah. Good boy. So. Because I proved to him yep. I not only am able to take charge of that dog, I'm willing to take charge of that dog. If we took that little dog and, and put it in the middle of all these other dogs and they had a play group, he's scared to death. Oh, they're having fun. We did a private lesson just a couple days ago with the dog that that's what happened. The dog went to, they took the dog to a class and they turned all the dogs loose in the class. This dog had never seen anything. And that dog got run around that room. From that day on, that dog is not like the other dogs, scared to death. We had a German Shepherd that came a couple weeks ago for a private lesson. People moved up here from Florida. Wonderful dog. They boarded it at a place where there was a play group. The dog had never seen. The people had done the right thing. They walked the dog. They took care of the dog. But the dog just moved up here. That dog from that day, because it was in with the big dogs, that dog from that day has hated other dogs. In 15 minutes of doing it right, the dog was back to the nice dog it was originally. So this nonsense of playing all the time um, in kids and dogs is for the birds. Dogs already know how to play. They need to learn how to function in society. Okay. Now, the other thing about that is because this dog is not socialized, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with him. He needs to learn. 
All right, now he's whining, isn't he? Now, Joan doesn't know what to do because I'm picking on her, which is fine. Oh, this is good. I know. Fine. No I know. problem. All right. Now, at home, if he was doing something inappropriate, you would actually correct him. Oh, yeah. I just okay. So, if he's if he's used stuff now, Joan handles dogs all the time. So, because he's not, she has some dogs. All right, the dogs seen lots of things. But at home, he knows how Joan would react. But when it, she's in public, she doesn't know what to do. So this is this is okay. He needs to know that you will also correct that because that's consistent with your behavior. So it's kind of like kids who would be corrected at home, oh, we can't do that in public. The kid knows that. The dog knows it. If we don't like good... Quiet. And you are fine. Thank you very much. Back off, Kate. Good girl, Kate. No. What do I want Kate to do if I have a problem with a dog? Come in. Back Come in. Back I'm not going to tell her to back off. Yeah. And she's not going to listen to anybody else no. to tell her to back off. Right. Good girl, Kate. Now, if I did that with this puppy a couple of times, what would Kate do? She'd correct the puppy. Quiet. Thank you. That puppy wants somebody to step up. Hey, you are fine. Thank you. Do you want me to do that? No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, do you want me to? Yeah, but okay. you're not the one that's really been praising the puppy or talking to the puppy. That's well, I the have done some. I know you have. Okay. I know you have. But the puppy doesn't... As a good breeder, you don't allow the puppy to bond tightly to you because it makes it harder when it goes to a new home. Right? So you don't special one puppy out and treat it like a little prince or princess. He hasn't been for Correct. about a month. Correct. And so you take care of all their needs. It's exactly what this dog had done. They are a parallel. See, he's been to classes, he's been... But he's been with other dogs. No, he's been... Handled. By himself? Oh, yeah. Okay, By himself. <coughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Well, a lot of times you take an X-Pen with some puppies in it. Oh, and... no, no, no. He goes in a crate and he gets special attention. He's okay, but finally... it's not but having to, to deal help. with things. He comes out, he's you handled... You have to deal with stuff when you're a show dog. Not oh, really. you... Julie, you don't have to deal with things as a show dog. Why is Otis here? Because he's a naughty boy. Because he doesn't know how to deal with things. Well, maybe I just think of it as normal. Well, you got a little dog, so you don't worry about it. You transfer it to this, he's also this parallel. Okay? Because he's going to be shown, he needs three points to finish. Because he's going to be shown, well, we don't do any of that stuff. One handler's already refused to handle him. Really? <laughs> because all that handler can do is give him a treat. He's much more interested in safety. The other one's fine. The other one is going to be just fine. And that other one probably has the same, same attitude as I do, and I don't think there's a problem. The problem comes when the handler allows the dog to have an attitude to get by with garbage because the handler's responsibility is to get the dog finished as a champion. Okay, the, hand, the handler doesn't care what happens. I mean, they can't. They're, they're there. They are a specialist. You want the dog finished as a champion? Pay me X number of dollars and you got a champion. Okay, then when you get done, no, no. Well, unless you've done it right. Easy. Easy. So we've kind of been doing that. Easy. But 
Julie has, is pretty excited about having a champion. So it didn't make much sense when he was a puppy. When he was a puppy, there was no problem. I've seen him at shows he behaves fine. But he's tough with other dogs. And there's two handlers. One probably. I have no idea. I don't know. But anyway, unless that dog has confidence in that handler, there you go. And as a breeder, it's our job to teach that dog to both respect and trust that that person, trust humans for decisions, not leave it up to the dog. So that you can take that dog anywhere and the dog says, I can trust you, if, if you tell me that, we'll be fine. We were just talking about handlers and how a, a true handler, professional or, or very experienced handler, they can stand up and tell you what to do. That's exactly what's happened here. It's exactly what's happened. But as a handler, we do things that we don't even think about. Yeah, Joan teaches, a, teaches classes all over. She educates people all over, all the time. She works with lots of kids. She's done it for years. We've known each other a long time. Now, in the class, she goes to confirmation class and handling class and teaches people what to do to do in the ring. That's what she does. In here, we teach people what to do when blah, blah, blah. In here, we concentrate on the relationship so you get a lot more of the insight because as at a performance class, same way with obedience, same way with the, you know, agility, rally, whatever. Okay, you're not doing all of the little things that that handler does to get their dogs the way they, they want them to be. If you were telling somebody about art, you could tell them the the structure of the art, you could tell them the technique. But you don't you don't even think about some of those finesse kind of things you do that, that you just take that for granted. One of the um, one of the biggest things is I get people come in here, we're in a class for two hours, dogs trained, dogs are well behaved. Most people, well, not most people, but many people, they're surprised when I play with my dog. Because they think all I do is live like this. Well, no. This is to teach a behavior, a discipline, a skill, a technique, a concept. But there's no way this dog spends 24-7 tied. They, people that come to class don't see the walks you take. They don't see what you do. You're constantly working. You're 24-7, you're teaching the dogs. The hard thing is when you are a handler or you have a number of dogs, you can only teach what you have access to. That's why your more intelligent instructors actually seek places to go that gives the dog different experiences than you can give. And also gives me things to do. Right. I Share get, I get dog puppies coming in and I learn, teach them all the stuff that we do here. Right. right. And they learn how to stand the dog, but puppies need to do this. Right. They do need to do this. Because this gives them the idea Good of being out in public, you have to simulate different experiences. Now, 
That puppy is being quiet, isn't he? It's not from the correction. It's because there's that connection. Okay, now, just like Chris is over here, and that puppy is teaching him to touch her. That's not much future in that. He's teaching it. He's teaching. Okay, now when he doesn't touch, that dog is barking, whining, pawing, jumping on his chair, right? The dog wants the connection. Now that puppy's not properly socialized, so consequently when she gets out in public, she doesn't know what to do. She wants this. Because they are a bubble, one bubble, when he's away from her, neither bubble is all. Sadly, this happens with people who want or need a dog that's an emotional support dog. The problem with it is, you want to go away sometimes, and you can't. When I have my hand here, if this was a puppy, okay, there's nothing wrong here. The dog's fine, isn't it? But this isn't a future. So when you look at Joan over here, head to the other side, that Airedale puppy. She has a lead on the dog. She's sitting far enough away the dog can't touch her. But that snap on that dog's second collar is Joan's hand on that collar. That lead is the extension of your arm. So in that way, Joan is touching that dog. There's the connection. That's what that lead is. Now, Carolyn has Max tied. He's got a line on. She's not even holding it. Now, that's an extension, that's a, a 15, 20 foot extension of Carolyn's arm. Just doesn't happen to be connected. Now, she is being easy, she's not being quiet. 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 Good quiet. Good quiet. Now, that says somebody hasn't been tying the dog at home. We can't get after the dog. If we're not doing it at home, if it's not normal at home to say please and thank you, you can bet it's not going to work out in public. You just ask any waitress who that's got a you know a table that say please, say please, say please, and that kid's never said please before in his life. I don't know who you're trying to kid. That's what that is. So we put up with it at home, but then when we go out, we correct the dog because we're embarrassed. Now, to someone who needs a service dog, who needs an emotional support dog, that draws attention that you don't want. That's the incentive to do it at home. That's the purpose for tying the dog. Now there was a time she needed the line on too. The difference was she had that big long blue line, it strung clear out here, and I could work with another dog, I could work with people, and I could pick it up, do this, and go right back to work. That dog had to understand that normal was her laying on the outside. You're fine. That's I'm not going to correct her for wanting to run out here and help me. I'm going to tie her so she can. Yeah. Good girl, Kate. Okay. Good boy. No. <laughs> just, just a little bit of... T you're fine. Like this? Easy. Good, Good boy. boy. Right. Lower your voice. Good, Good boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> when you show dogs that upper squeaky voice gets them more excited. But when they're tied to the wall, worried, that squeaky voice gets them more excited. You're fine. You're fine. Just fine. You Good are fine. Now. You're fine. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs>
I love it when somebody you respect and you know that knows a, you know, pretty equal can come and you can still pick on, pick on each other and learn from each other. Now, many of the lessons with small dogs have come from working with Jones dogs. We've done so many different dogs that um, it's really fun when Joan has a little bit of either a challenge or a puppy that needs socialization or whatever. Um, and by the way, Mozzie, who was here earlier, what's he doing these days, Joan? Well, he's got a junior handler, 12 years old, in Wisconsin, who goes to the shows, and she's taking him to the shows, and he is living. Living. With her, lives at her house. Now, we went to a lot of shows, and every weekend, I would, quiet, you're fine now, you're fine. And um, she would work with him a little bit, back to when we just shook hands with people because he was afraid. You are fine. Thank you. Good oh, boy. You're fine. And so we worked a little bit. Whatever we did here in class, I would work with that girl at the shows. And so she only saw him two days a week, but let me tell you, he couldn't care less about me anymore. He really didn't <laughs> And he'll do anything for her. I, he said, pick, she, she's teaching him tricks and all kinds of stuff with Pat. But that's, the, that's what they don't see in the ring. That's, that's right. what they don't see in class. That's what makes the dog feel valued because you're teaching them things. You only care, you only do those things with something you care about. You don't bother with things you don't care about. Good boy, you're fine. Good. Now, in a handler, they can find the dog. When they take the dog to a show, they get it out, show it, and back, it goes back and confined. That's so the dog doesn't learn anything bad along the way. I mean, depending on the breed, you handle it different ways. But most likely, when Otis, well, I know for a fact, most of the time, Otis is Julie. And then the handler takes, takes them once in a while, is that correct? Yeah. So... There's not a lot of structure in Julie's house. We've talked about that. We've been working on it. Otis has actually been coming here on Wednesdays and staying till Saturday. He's calmed down immensely because it's taking the pressure off the dog. She has another great Dane at home who doesn't have the same demands. Why? Older. You can't train one kid and not the other. Older? Sure. Um, they're pretty much the same. And he's... how oh, that one learned. That one doesn't know anything. That's the way Julie normally raises great days. <laughs> At home. And not socialized. But that dog, do they get along? No. Why? No. They have to be constantly supervised. Well, they're both whole males. Well, when Otis really becomes a big boy... Yep. He's going to settle that one. And that's going to be an ugly, ugly one. We've talked about that. Okay. Now, we've had a lot of experience as far as dogs tied to the wall and even walking on a leaf. I don't dwell so much on the handling part of it. When we do a private lesson, we do dwell on it. We do spend a lot of time, especially if the dog is the least bit Spooky, um, you know, uncooperative, um, standoffish, fearful, all that stuff is done on the table. Kate is just one step up, though, from the rest of these dogs. You see? Good. She's a very young girl. She wasn't given an education. She was handled properly. There's nothing wrong with her. But she wasn't educated as she should. Good girl. Kate is now getting her GED. Well, it's an escalated education. Okay, it's the same information. But when she's mature, she could handle it. She couldn't handle it as a baby. She was unsocialized. So it's like Mozzie. We gave him time to feel better. And then 
we can teach it. That's what's going on. So on the table, this is where your veterinarian is. This is where your groomer is. You have that second line. Use it. Move just a little farther away from her. And correct her like Joan. I gave you the opportunity to learn by example, but we need to, we need to take that serious. All right. This dog needs to understand that you can safely handle every part of her and not have to be afraid. Now people who have, who scratch them all the time, who are always doing this nonsense, why would the dog stand there and let anybody pet him? How irritating is that? Easy. There are three ways to pet a dog. Stroking. This is like a hug. Stroking. I value you. You can trust me. Scratching is like tickling. Kid wasn't the kid won't stand still if you're tickling them. Good girl, Kate. She's obviously had this done before. Otherwise she'd be wiggling all over. Okay. Thumping. You you punch somebody in the arm. Easy. It conditions the dog to take a correction. <coughs> so the more you thump that dog, the tougher it's gonna be. Think about the difference between how you would handle a piano player and a football player. Oh, you're doing so good with your piano. The football player, good job, guy. Okay, do the same thing to the dog. You stand. I don't care what I'm doing. When you go to the vet, when you go to a dog show, some judges are very heavy-handed. If your dog is touch sensitive piano player, you better be doing some conditioning. If you got kids, you better be doing some conditioning. Easy. No, you stand. She doesn't understand why I'm being rough with her. Hey, stand. Stand. Now this means every square inch of this dog. When you paid, when you wrote the check for this dog, or you got your credit card out, you bought from here to here, from here to here. You didn't buy this. You own this dog. You're fine. Good boy. Every square inch. Therefore. You're fine. Every square inch of this dog must belong to you or when you go to the vet, the vet becomes the bad guy. <coughs> Easy. Good. Good dog. Good dog. Good. This is so important. Because if, if you were a judge, okay, judge, come on up here. Easy. Fine. You, easy. You're on the wrong side. Good, easy. Easy. You're the veterinarian, you're not a judge. Easy. Good, easy. Only when this dog is safe enough are you not going to pay double the vet bills, right? <laughs> Or they'll tell you not to come back. That's right. You'll get excused from the ring. Yep. Your dog is... You can't groom it. That's if a groomer can't safely handle a dog, you're going to be searching. Good. good. This takes so little time. Good boy. Good. Now this is also where I teach positions. Okay, sit. Good sit. Good sit. Now, you notice she didn't back into the sit. By teaching her to tuck her butt, I get a better position. Stand. 
Good stand. Good stand. Good. Okay, sit. This is one of the most Good fascinating sit. things by people who come out of class. Oh my gosh. Hey, you sit. They never realize. Well, if you don't teach a show dog to sit and down, then you're correcting them for doing so. And then you get done showing them, and then you're correcting them for not sitting. That's cruel. By teaching that dog, sit, stand, and down, okay, down. Good, down. On the table. With a show dog, we don't have to teach, the, we don't have to have the dog sitting down on the floor. But he knows it. Down. Good, down. Yeah, people think that your dog doesn't have to do anything that it doesn't do when it's in the show. Well, it's ridiculous. I can remember coming down there to teach that confirmation class. Years ago. And, and there were people in, I got there early enough, I, I hated to watch it, but I, I did. And they would come in there and they would correct the dog for not sitting automatically in an obedience class. Then they would turn around with the same choke chain, end up in confirmation class, and correct the dog for sitting. How fair is that? Hey, you, subtle. Your commands are tools. Good down. Good subtle. Good easy. Down on a table is a place of a massage. This is conditioning the dog to not fear the down. How many dogs get in and, and, and in the middle of a class, you're having to correct them to go down? It's the most vulnerable position you can put them in. Now, if you want an even softer dog, you teach the dog tip. Tip Kate. Good tip. Oh, what a nice tipping dog. Good tip. She's even more vulnerable. Kate, sit. 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 Uh huh. Sit. Good sit. She's never heard sit that she sat crooked. Good sit. Kate, down. Good down. You're fine. Good down. You're fine. Good down. Now, if this dog can trust you with every piece of her body in the most vulnerable position, what a relationship you have. Good dog. I know, you're very cute. Stand. Oh, what a good stand. Anybody who does obedience should be just chomping at the bit. This is what you do in advanced obedience. <laughs> the sit to the down, the down to the stand, the teach them on the table. Good dog. And then the dog can never escape off the table. You're fine. This is trust. Stand. Okay. Easy. Stand. Wow. <laughs> Poor dog. <laughs> good dog. You made a really good point. Um, when we were having the dogs on the table, when you're trying to help your dog, very often we get in the habit of staring into their eyes, being way too soft, or, oh, what a good dog. <laughs> now, yeah, that dog is not very big. But she's a year old. She's a 20-year-old young woman. So, you're as close to 20 as anybody in here. Oh, hey. <laughs> now, see there. Okay. Oh, Petraeus, you've done such a nice job. Oh, thanks. Okay, if you're blonde and a blonde joke, okay, that's how you react. <laughs> okay, now. 
Petraea is a good actress. She can play any role. All right, now, how do you feel you being you? Oh, hi, Petraea. Yeah, that's exactly how she feels about it. It's patronizing. It's way too sicky, syrupy, sweet. I don't take you serious. No way. Now, it gets tougher when the dogs are short because when that dog is 10 years old, he's still going to be short. When Diva is 10, she's still going to be the same height she is. So when we start... Ooh, come on, baby. First of all, if you start talking to me that way, it ain't going to work. All right? Um, so get in the habit of teaching your dog. You don't patronize little kids. Okay, you got a, you got a little, you know, eight-year-old kid, six-year-old kid. All right, you aren't going to talk baby talk to them. They can't help it if they're short. But that doesn't change the fact that maturity-wise, what's our goal? To get them to be adults. I have corrected more people for talking sicky, sweet, soft to Kate. Ooh, look at you. Don't you dare talk to my dog that way. It doesn't happen around here. Because I want that dog to grow up and be able to encounter something and step between whoever has a hold of her lead and whatever's coming. If you're talking service dogs, you can't have a dog that's softer than you. You've got to have a dog that's an equal. Now, to keep track of an equal, you darn sure better be the godfather.